Oh, <laughs> I kid, I kid. <laughs> um, <laughs> operating room no nos, unconventional chest compressions, and what in the world is happening here? Today, we're back at it, breaking down and reacting to all of the unhinged medical scenes and absurd injuries from Futurama. Let's dive right in. Incoming wounded. All personnel report to operating tent four. Wait a minute. The person on the outside of the helicopter? Experiences that I've been in, they are on the inside. Are you ready to operate, doctor? I'd love to, but first I have to perform surgery. Doing the appropriate scrubbing, we scrub in, meaning you literally scrub your hands all the way up to your elbows, and then you hold your hands up, allowing the water to drip off, because some of that water might actually still be a little dirty, so you don't want it to re-drip down into your cleanest hands. <laughs> I kid, I kid. <laughs> um, <laughs> you actually will have somebody help put your gloves on for you to put your hands in to keep them nice and sterile. And if you do rip through, typically you don't take off. You actually just put a new pair on. Dirty pair stays underneath. So obviously, we won't talk about the sterility component right now because there's a lobster operating. Scalpel. Blood bucket. Priest. Next patient. Wow. So it's scalpel, blood bucket, and priest. Scalpel is typically is only used to cut through the skin. And then there's other type of instruments that we'd end up using. Geez, Zoidberg, leave some for the enemy to kill. Oh my gosh, it has got a martini in his hands. Note, you cannot drink while operating. And holding the scalpel backwards in your hand that way is not appropriate either. You use it more gently with your finger on top holding it. Leave Dr. Zoidberg alone. He has twice the training you do. Yeah, he's a doctor and a butcher. <laughs> <laughs> Butchers do wear white coats too. That patient should not be laughing. They probably should be sedated. I'm afraid he's gone. Whoa, Doc, I ain't dead. Excuse me, I believe I'm the doctor. There has been something called Lazarus Syndrome, where somebody is pronounced dead and then they wake up shortly thereafter. It is a quite rare experience to have. Oh. Bender, old buddy, hang in there. Is that a beer? Oh. It looks like it's a beer that is hung as an IV drip. Appropriate tubing, actually. Sometimes medicine does come in unique shaped bottles. Because I got to dance and make people happy. I never knew I could hate this much. Duct tape to a knee. I wouldn't recommend that, but duct tape does have a lot of uses in the medical world. It can cover up wounds. It could stabilize a joint if you needed to. And obviously it's used in a lot of different survival situations. This is the bestest day of my whole God. Oh. What? Oh my God, people, she's having a heart attack. Whoa. The bean sign, basically, if you put your hand in a fist over your heart, and it could be indicative of a heart attack. A cute little heart attack. Whoa. Whoa. Typically, it's not common for a pediatric patient to have a heart attack due to an occluded vessel. It would be some other underlying medical issue that is going on. I'm a doctor, and yes, they're real. I like how the... Doctor just has a defibrillator right there. You put it on the right anterior chest wall and the left flank, so the energy goes through in that direction. And then you shock, and then you do CPR. Clear. <laughs> that sound that you're hearing is a an example of what a flatline. Holy mother of God, he's flatlining. Would sound like a flatline is something called asystole, where there's no electrical activity. AKA, the heart is not beating and you're dead. I'm gonna dance on your corpse right now! Do -do -do oh, he's gonna do CPR and bring it right back. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> Take that, that, Bender. Brings up a couple points. You need to do chest compressions. If you find somebody down, check, hey, are you okay? Shake them. Then check if they are breathing. Look, listen, feel. Plus, you're looking for the pulse. If you don't have any of that, obviously get somebody to call 911. Fry, I'm an 80s guy. Friendship to me means that for two bucks, I beat you with a pool cue till you got detached retinas. Wow. Retina, basically part of your eye that has your cone and rods and has to do with vision and that actually can detach off the wall. And if that occurs, then you actually won't be able to see. People will describe a detached retina as like a curtain falling down. The deal will go ahead as... Whoa. Whoa, contracting all weird. Maybe he's got tetanus or something like that or some weird infection. My bone! 
bones! <gasps> oh my god, he's bone-itis! Bone-itis. Bone. Bone! Obviously, we know what that is, but an itis just means, like, inflammation. Obviously, bone-itis is not a <laughs> medical diagnosis. Oh, the awful noise. You have things like tetanus can cause muscle contractions so much that you get bent in funky positions, but we have vaccinations for that. I've never actually seen somebody with tetanus. He's dead. <gasps> somebody may have osteopenia or osteogenesis imperfecta. Osteogenesis imperfecta. Where the bones break super easy. Here's the plan. We'll enter the ear, drip down the back of the throat. So your ear does not have like an open tunnel, typically. You have a tympanic membrane, AKA your eardrum, that seals it off from the inside, outside world. You can't just put something in your ear and it's gonna go on the inside of your body unless there's a hole inside your tympanic membrane. And make for the bowel. Once you do get in, yes, you can get through the eustachian tube to the posterior pharynx, and then basically you could potentially swallow into your stomach, into your small intestines, small intestines, then to your large intestines, and then out. So it's quite interesting. They did a nice job at least showing some of the anatomy here in this picture. There will irritate the pelvic splanchnic ganglion. The ganglions are these like conglomerations, and then splanchnic has to do with the area and the specific type of nerves. We use the same word for a lot of different things. And cause an intestinal spasm. It's quite interesting. There is a great relationship of your brain to your intestines. The only way that they're connected is by nerves. So when the brain is stressed out, maybe people will experience diarrhea. Individuals out there, you know this feeling. Expelling, among other things, the parasites. Parasites is a broad term. Even a worm is a parasite. So there could be different types, different sizes. Big ones, small ones, some as big as your head. All different kinds out there. I've talked about Giardia before, I've talked about pinworms and different types of helmins, roundworms, tapeworms, different things that can actually go into your liver, into your brain. I'll tell Fry to wash out, among other things, his ear. Cool idea. This reminds me of Inner Space, old school movie with Dennis Quaid and Martin Short, where they actually went inside of the human body. Super cool. No! Fry can't know anything about the mission. If he finds out, the worms will try to defend themselves. Do the worms fight back? I, I, typically, any organism out there is going to try to defend itself when it feels that it is threatened. Could that be a possibility? Sure. Have I ever seen it? No. Futurama, actually really good clips to, to react to. Uh, definitely get my brain going, thinking about how I interact with patients on a daily basis. So if you guys enjoyed this, definitely check out this playlist right here. Make sure you binge watch everything. And as always, please make sure that you subscribe, turn your bell notifications on, and hit that like button for me. Thank you so much for watching, and stay healthy, my friends.